Um, let's get started. Um, today's webinar is being recorded, so just a bit of housekeeping here. Today's uh, webinar is, uh, like I said, being recorded and we'll send all attendees a link to the recording in the next uh, couple of days. Uh, the session will last about uh, 30 minutes, after which we'll be taking questions for about five minutes uh, at the end. So feel free to post any questions um, uh, you may have uh, throughout the presentation in the chat box or in the toolbar. So uh, all of that said, let's get started now. So again, um, my name is G. Satish. I'm the CEO and the co-founder at Connex. Really pleased to welcome you all uh, to this webinar. And with me is uh, Danny Brown, the Chief Operating Officer of uh, Relaming. Hello, Danny. And if you can introduce yourself, that'll be great. Certainly. Um, as Satish said, I am Danny Brown, Chief Operating Officer for Relam in Granite City, Illinois. All right. Um, so one of the things, uh, Danny, I know is that uh, your story is kind of closely intertwined with Relam. And I was quite fascinated to learn how it's kind of come full circle for you over the years. So again, if you can talk a little bit more about Relam and about yourself and what you're doing there, that'd be great. Yeah, I mean, first I'd just like to start off with uh, Satish and just thank you and the team at iMark for giving me uh, this platform to talk about the great team we do have at Relam today and how we're utilizing iMark. And so you alluded to it earlier, I've been blessed to serve three different companies in this building uh, going back to the late 1990s. Uh, originally, it was Progress Energy. Uh, the second time, uh, 2010 to 2012, it was Caterpillar's Progress Rail. And then the third time, our sponsor, Paceline, literally brought me home, so to speak, in 2020. Uh, so this is the third time and, uh, and that I've worked here in Granite City. And you know, kind of who we are at Relam, right? Uh, we are North America's largest provider for rail construction equipment. And uh, throughout um, the decades, this facility and our, our sister in Cleveland have supported those initiatives. Um, the company was founded in the early 1990s, though its roots go back to the 1920s. Uh, and we employed just under 100 team members across three company owned facilities. Our headquarters is near Cleveland in Glen Willow, Ohio. Uh, our second facility is in just outside of St. Louis in Granite City, Illinois. And we also have a Spencer, Wisconsin uh, location which upfits uh, and rents high rail vehicles and that is Wiscursion truck and equipment. Thank you for that, uh, Danny. Um... Uh, just a couple of quick words about Connext uh, before we go forward. Uh, we started Connext back in 2014 uh, with the express sole objective of making life easy and safe for mechanics and technicians uh, using cloud mobile technology. And we came up with our flagship product, Connext iMark. Uh, we have since become mission critical to customers in a variety of industries with fixed assets, uh, heavy equipment, uh, fleet, uh, distributed work uh, workforce and, and so on. So there's, there's a lot we've been doing since uh, we came about. Um, so back to Relam, Danny, can you talk a bit about Relam as to where it is today as a business and especially in the context of the last 24 months? Well, Satish, we've navigated through the integration of two legacy companies battled past uh, COVID shutdowns, social distancing, significant supply chain disruptions, uh, increased our production safely, our workforce on site, boots on ground, and somehow through it, increased our equipment utilization and our revenue. So that kind of tells the story of the really the last 24 months uh, here at Relam. And uh, and kind of looking forward, uh, what do the next 24 or the 36 months look like? I mean, in terms of growth and expansion? Well, really, I'm in the operations team uh, as the executive team are always searching, you know, for new ways to continuously improve Satish, uh, strategic acquisitions, organically grow. Uh, and we're really driven just to kind of reduce our own waste and any inefficiencies that we find 
by educating our team in its best practices, equipment training. Uh, you know, we plan to leverage our technology-based solutions that are provided to us uh, to deliver a safer work environment, more productive work environment, and utilizing our telematics in conjunction with products like iMark really gain some attractive effort around predictive and preventative maintenance for reducing our total cost of ownership of our equipment fleet. Um, which kind of uh, leads us uh, to the next uh, part of this. You know, now that we've kind of established a relance trajectory, uh, we just want to dive a bit deeper. What were the challenges and issues uh, Relam faced, you know, with the systems that you already had in place or that you just brought in uh, over the past few years? Well, you know, anytime that you bring two divergent cultures, Satish, um, into into one house, you, you always have to consider the impact to your human capital, to your team members. So one of the challenges that we had right out of the gate was after acquiring Progress Rail Equipment Leasing in January of 20, we were actively chasing the acquisition of Relam, which closed in July of 2020. So we had to bring those divergent cultures and those houses together. And one of the challenges was what software package would be the backbone of the go forward. So the executive and finance team came together and kind of focused in on uh, an Oracle product. It's a net suite as the backbone. Uh, but then we also have looped in other uh, operating software, HubSpot for commercial, and then a various platform of financial products that, that also interface with our uh, ERP solution in NetSuite. And then the challenges are, are always just like any integration, uh, despite the challenges of COVID and all the, the supply chains tr of tradi traditional acquisitions and strategic infrastructure. Which kind of leads to the other interesting question of um, how did, you know, Relam, you know, the, the, the management team work around these challenges, right? Well, I mean, again, as you can imagine, bringing any divergent cultures together is different platforms. You have to quickly access uh, what strengths we, we can leverage. And, um, you know, obviously operating on different platforms, having divergent cultures is a challenge. But, um, you know, we looked to focus in on all the technology-based, software-based tools that we could. Uh, we implemented a telematics program that didn't exist previously at either of the legacy companies. And so those are the kind of things where we started, right? Find the ERP, get the telematics, gain the traction from those, and then continue. Um, and one last question on this count. Uh, you, you've referred to your tech stack, in a sense, the, the, the uh, information technology. Uh, what other systems or software uh, are in use at Relam? I mean, and what are they used for? I, I, yeah. So we do, as I mentioned, we have our, our telematics provider, and that captures um, all the data that comes out of a J1939 bus from our equipment. That helps us create a predictive and preventative maintenance program. We have our, our commercially driven HubSpot that, that is for our sales side of the house. Um, and now that we've chosen iMark, iMark's going to move us into that digital mm -hmm. session going forward. Thank you for that, Danny. Um, so uh, a couple of quick words uh, before we sort of, as we head into a discussion of how iMark is working at Relam, I just want to point to a few features in the product that I know Danny, you and your team liked from the very beginning. Uh, for instance, the ability to digitize all of your forms and processes, the integration with your backend systems and so on. And in general, um, I, I think the ability to hand complexity, to quickly configure and modify uh, the forms and processes of any complexity that you have, and you do have some really complex ones. Um, Speech to text with multilingual support. This is again a perennial favorite amongst all our users. Photographs with annotations, uh, the ability to add, uh, to annotate and add photographs to any line item, especially, um, you know, becomes especially critical where there are workflows, approvals, and audits involved. Uh, all of these sort of uh, become big. But I, I also want to point to the one thing that uh, we're kind of heavily focused on here, 
um, it, it needs to be easy for your crew. And this is really something that uh, you and the rest of the Relam team were kind of really interested in making sure that your crew shouldn't have to suddenly become tech experts to sort of code digital. And I think that's something that we're heavily focused on, on the user adoption. Yeah, so, you spoke. Yeah, you, ahead, you, you, kind of, you kind of spoke to it on, on our forms, right? And, and that's key. I mean, while our forms and our processes may not be unique, they are certainly specialized. And just to give the viewer kind of an example, we have over 20 separate uh, equipment return checklists that, that need to be completed before the equipment is scheduled for any routine maintenance or running repairs. And the equipment inspection forms have anywhere from 700, you know, items that need to be completed for our less com complex units and our larger, more complex work equipment uh, can exceed a thousand uh, items that need to be checked off uh, through the re the return equipment checklist. And so that was key for us really was finding a solution, uh, Satish, that took our form and presented it back to us in a way that we were used to seeing. Yeah. And we were successful with that uh, through iMark. So which uh, kind of leads to, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the implementation of iMark itself. Um, perhaps you can talk through the implementation process. And, and in fact, one of the key things again is you were most concerned right at the outset about the impact all of these kinds of initiatives may have on your IT teams. All IT teams everywhere are overloaded all the time. So perhaps you can talk through a little bit about your implementation process and your experience there. Uh, certainly, um, you know, it's that's a big part of the decision we make at Relam. Uh, you know, while we saw the benefits of the implementation from an operations perspective, we definitely did not want to uh, add any workload to our IT team. And, you know, I've been part of other um, enterprise rollouts and most of them have not gone uh, that well and quite frankly have been unpleasant, but not in this case with iMark. Um, you know, I'm glad to say your team was clear from up, you know, from the get go and up front uh, that you would minimize any heavy lift that we had to partake. And, and quite frankly, um, you, you know, the scope of work for our IT team was whittled down to really just a few days, maybe a week and a half, as opposed to previously what I've seen was several weeks or months to get through that process. So from an IT perspective, not a heavy lift to implement iMark. So, into, so one of the things, I mean, it's a great point you make, uh, Danny, and this is something I do want to share with you, and, and you know about this, but certainly for the audience too. This is one of the things uh, that we work extra hard on. It's it's not just, uh, you know, product features and making it easier for the users that are on a roadmap. I mean, it's a constant focus, but above and beyond that, uh, we're always looking at means to reduce the implementation timeline plus IT overload. And this is something that's actually a part of a product roadmap as, you know, at, at every step of the way. Um, so I, I do want to talk through, uh, I know these are early days, but what are the impacts of iMark on the ground level? I mean, what has been the feedback uh, from your crew about iMark, how easy or difficult has it been for them to transition? Well, stepping back early on in the discovery sessions that we had with your team, uh, what we found was the flexibility of iMark and its back of the house support. We had an early on a session where we were just looking at the equipment check-in sheet, which is essentially a bill of lading. So when, a, when an asset comes back to us at Relam, um, you know, in the past, we had a piece of paper that the technician would fill out carrier, serial, hours, customer, condition, uh, that piece of paper along with a digital camera would be used to, you know, take photographs to document the condition as an asset was shipped or as it was returned. And we started with that as low hanging fruit because it was a one page document and we had our technician use it, just test it for a week. And he sat in on that discovery session and was quick to point out that iMark only allowed for four photos where he was used to taking up to 12. 
And very quickly in that meeting, uh, Prabhu was able to pivot, add the, the lines that were needed for additional photographs, represent it back to us in probably 15 minutes, Satish, and pretty much cemented, at least with our technicians, that if they had a concern or if there was a workaround or something needed to change, that it could be addressed very quickly. And, and once we got past that first hurdle, the next week you took one of our robust forms and brought it back to us to present it to us in a, in a manner that was essentially the same, albeit not black and white, now we're in a digital platform, but it gave some of our senior techs comfort that you would be able to do what you said you could do. So uh, user adoption is key in any implementation across work segments. And the focus that iMark and the team put on the technician, in this case, our welders, fabricators, electricians, and mechanics was impressive. They understood the world and the environment that they were in. They had been used to implementing it with these sorts of teams before. You alluded it to it with the speak to text, the photographs. It's a very easy app for them to use. It's like any other application that you would have on your smartphone or your tablet. Uh, so user adoption is key. And in this case, you know, we've had some pushback, but I would say we're 90 plus percent on acceptance. And it is a very early rollout, but so far so good. Great. Um, and actually, I do want to point to something interesting here, right? Um, as, as we look at numbers, you know, those that we have on screen. So at the sea level, your focus is really, you know, on the numbers. You know, this is above and beyond simply making life easy for the crew, automating reporting, you know, strengthening compliance, etc. So, um, uh, and you already talked about the user adoption, but perhaps anything else you want to add about these three key metrics? Uh, and again, I should say this, that, you know, right at the outset, you made it clear that these are the types of parameters uh, that are of paramount importance to you and the rest of the team. Yeah, when you, when you look at just the speed and the data integrity that's returned back to the enterprise, um, if you just look at the return equipment process, that could take us hours to get the data back to the, the individuals that needed it. Now with the iMark product, with the iPad, the photographs are taken along with the equipment check-in form. It's submitted, it's kicked out to a distribution list so that all of the commercial, financial, and operations people are notified at once that this asset has indeed returned. Here's what it looks like. Here are the known faults. And so it's the speed at which it returns the data to the enterprise that's impressive. And you know, when we talk about labor efficiencies and gains, that's one of the things that we looked at. You're, we're always uh, you know, cognizant of the numbers, Satish. And in, we looked at what that would allow us to give back to the enterprise just from the simple return and shipping process. And so we do uh, estimate that about 20% of our current labor time spent on the process will be returned to the enterprise. Thank you for that uh, uh, kind of insight. I So one of the other things uh, we wanna talk about, right, as you look forward, what are your goals to grow and refine, you know, your existing operations? A little bit of an insight into that would be helpful. Um, yeah, so after fully, implementing the iMark process, we're expecting to increase our, our throughput and better manage our inventory levels, Satish. Um, you know, this inventory will be based on consumption patterns that are tracked and reported in real time, domiciled in a cloud. And, and our growth will be driven, you know, through our labor efficiencies that we see. So we'll never cease um, to refine our operations. You know, we learn from each running repair, each rebuild, um, you know, how to better succeed in the future. And iMark will just be another tool that helps us capture that. The team's culture is outstanding at Relam. And, you know, the, the tools needed, you know, we allow our employees to give that input, whether it's uh, safety related, uh, whether it's production, uh, it's all experience based. And so we will continue overall to drive the reliability the safety and the quality of the equipment that we provide to our customer base by leveraging these 
you know, programs such as our telematics, such as iMark, that'll drive those efficiencies. So um, one sort of related question to this, right? What do you see as the next steps uh, in your journey to digitize maintenance? Well, you know, currently we, we have about 80% of the forms that we previously discussed already in the iMark system. Um, but we're looking to add our safety library uh, to iMark as well. Um, we've already finished uh, the digital process. We took all of our old manuals that were book bound, digitized those and put them throughout kiosk. We're uh, at the same time we're implementing iMark, we're implementing a new safety data sheet system where, you know, per OSHA, you always have your, your safety data sheet binder, but we're also digitizing that. So anytime that a uh, manufacturer changes the chemical makeup of a product, it will automatically be submitted to Relam via a PDF. We can then update it. And then throughout our plants, we're going to have our QR codes. So again, you know, the next steps is to digitize pretty much every process we can conceivably do. So. And last but not the least, what more uh, would you like to see in iMark? Oof. You know, honestly, we're, we're just getting starting with the process. Um, but it's it's quite limitless. What I like about iMark, and and I don't think we touched on it in this in this session, but in addition to taking your form, making it your way, and 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 speeding up and delivering what I consider to be data integrity, reducing um, opportunities for improvement. You know, what do I want to see from iMark? Don't know, but I, I, I'm sure we'll find it at Relam, and and we'll 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 request it in the future. Um. So a, a couple of quick words. Um, I mean, this is sort of inherently a part of all businesses, and I know uh, you and, and John Roberts, your CEO. I mean, we've talked about sustainability. Can you talk to your sustainability goals in general? Yeah, and and you mentioned John. You know, we wouldn't be here today if it weren't if it weren't for the support of our sponsor, Paceline, and our chief executive, Satish. And you know, you had several connections with John. Um, you know, his buy into this product. Um, I don't have a lot to ask, but when I do, I think John understands it's important. And this was crucial um, in order to improve, in my opinion, reducing the paper process was essential. The sustainability is a focus, but it's also a byproduct of going digital. And so we did a, a you know a high level analysis just on the amount of paper we were using for parts requisitions, equipment checkouts, um, equipment returns, and then all of those forms. You know, in a given year, we're going to touch 400 pieces of equipment. Satish, uh, you do the math on all of that. We expect to save anywhere from seven to eight thousand sheets of paper. You know the time it takes to print it, to bind it, to deliver it. Um, you know, so wherever possible, when it comes to sustainability, we want to eliminate waste and then reduce the energy consumption it takes to meet our current level or exceed the current level of our output. And so, finding solutions to better utilize or repurpose materials is going to be key going forward for us. Um, that's definitely the next chapter in innovation for Relam. And the iMark digital solution, um, you know, will eliminate most of the paper. It won't take all of the paperwork out, Satish, but it will eliminate most of the paperwork that we have today. And it will just really honestly establish a more predictive approach uh, to our routine maintenance. Right. Um, so, you know, and, and you talk of the, uh, seven to 8,000 sheets of paper. So here's an interesting bit of statistic. So this is our estimate from our customers uh, in the course of last year. And I suspect uh, the 150,000 sheets that we saved last year is probably up by about 40% as it stands today, probably be about double, maybe about uh, a little bit more than that by the time we close this year out. Uh, and again, to me, to us, all of us here and with our customers, this is one of the most exciting byproducts of digitization. This goes above and beyond ROI, ROA compliance, and so on. I mean, this is uh, something great that we're seeing here. Um, so I 
like to zoom out a bit. Um, and if you take a step back, acknowledge that it is not very common or easy for companies and industries like where Relam is to adopt technologies like IMR. In that sense, um, Relam is quite the trailblazer. I'd like your perspective as an industry insider on where you think the winds are blowing and any competitive advantages that you believe uh, come with embracing digitization and adopting technologies uh, like iMark that we're discussing here. Well, you know, in my discoveries, I was able to reach out to a few successful clients that had implemented iMark. And and that was that gave us some comfort in addition to what your team was able to do. Um, you know, really am again, we're focused on continual improvement, Satish, and that drives our EHS programs, our production, our reporting, um, and having access to this this digital library for the work scope, SDS sheets, um, the history photo libraries. And so, you know, I won't say we're trailblazing, and I think anyone that has an operation of this size understands the constraints that paper introduces. And so, you know, the one thing that, that I think IMARC will drive for us is, is simply data integrity. No more opportunities for improvement where we've lost, you know, six hours of hard work through a checklist or it's been soiled, contaminated, somebody left it on a, on a piece of equipment, it got rained on, what would be you? So, um, you know, most of the repair facilities that I work with, you know, still operate on some form of a paper-based work platform, you know, and, and, and that's difficult, right? We, we look to see what innovations we can find at Relam that will make us, again, number one, a safer place to work for our, for mm -hmm. our team members. Number two, more productive. Number three, more reliable. And it, it really does feed all those initiatives by by taking the leap and going digital it, it's not an easy conversation to have mm -hmm. uh, i i can understand why people may be reluctant to want to change from using a decades old approach to jumping into an ipad uh, but for my perspective it's what will continue to drive our sustainability it will drive our efficiencies and it will give us hours back for production. Well, thanks for that, Danny. Um, that was very insightful. And uh, uh, so we're, we're kind of uh, towards the end of the, the, the sort of the presentation session. Um, I do want to remind the audience, I mean, we're already seeing some questions flow in. Please do pop your questions in there. Uh, before we move there, um, anything else you'd like to add that we haven't had a chance to talk about so far, Danny? No, Satish, I just, again, just like to thank you for taking this time to allow us to speak just a little bit about Relam and, and the great team that we have. Thank you, Danny. So um, I'm now going to sort of turn it open to respond to some questions, and we're already seeing quite a few in here. Uh, so let me start with uh, with a few here. And, and again, um, to everyone that is putting in questions, even if we're not able to address all of them here, uh, rest assured, we will get back to you with responses on each of these uh, separately, even if we can't address them during the webinar. So uh, this is a good one. So any do's and don'ts for a business considering this initiative, uh, Danny? Yeah, if, if if you have any interest in going digital, you know, my do here is is research the products that are available Find the one that fits for you. Uh, key on the flexibility and the pain point of implementation, and I think you'll you'll find a great product. And and iMark's been a great partner. And don'ts. I, so yeah, okay. Satish, don'ts. Don't answer the first one and run with it. Right. Uh, do your due diligence. I think John, Mr. Aquilina, Harold Charles, Craig Gilbert, uh, and myself, we probably sat through four to five different groups. And it took us close to probably two and a half years to find this one. So don't just stop at the first one. And, and actually, the couple of things I do want to add to that, uh, we already talked about, you already touched upon that a couple of times. One, uh, the, the, the management needs to set a clear agenda and drive this forward. People need to know that look, this is a new world we're stepping into. Uh, and the second is a bit more tactical, what we've seen over and over with, every one of our uh, implementations that has been uh, 
you know, successful has been to involve end users early on. And uh, I know Relan did a great job of getting your folks in early in the game, you know, talk, you know, testing the product out within the first few weeks uh, to make sure that the feedback was given so we can. Um, um, so here's a good one. So we have a fairly complex operation compatible to yours, but our IT department is really small. Would this work for us? We have seen other enterprise software implementations that consume all resources everywhere. So I, we've talked about this too, Daddy, but go ahead, please. Yeah, I, I think it's, it, it depends on the scope of your work processes. And again, I've done a few of these implementations that can be quite unpleasant. In this case, because it is more of an app base, once your forms would be digitized, it's really just a simple API. So as long as iMark has the capability and you can research that with them, that it'll interface with your ERP or whatever network software you're running, it, it should be uh, somewhat painless. Right. Um, so here's a, uh, there's an interesting perspective they're asking you to offer. So apart from the technicians, right, and the, and the crew, um, how have you or any other business users, I guess, in, in the boardrooms and elsewhere, benefited from the implementation of iMark? Yeah, so today we have not gained a lot of visibility because we've just most recently implemented this, right? So, but when you look at where we'll go in the future, iMark has a dashboard of reports that are customizable. So there's a world here very shortly, you know, by the end of Q4 where, our commercial team will be able to get data that they want from our operations team directly from IMARC, our FP&A, our CFO, and that side of the house will be able to capture the data that they're looking for uh, from IMARC. And then obviously the operations team and then shop management will be able to capture what they need from IMARC. So having it in a cloud-based for, you know, a format where you can slice and dice the data that's retrieved uh, and obviously utilizing NetSuite as well. Um, it gives you the capability to create those custom KPIs that you just don't have in a paper-driven process. Um, so, so this is, uh, again, an interesting one, and you'll see why uh, I, I don't want to add much to this. So what was your comfort level in going, you know, the process through the process with context. I guess the process is your evaluation and everything else. Um, so, um, I, I didn't have any concerns with iMark, but iMark was the last solution that came to us. So we had already spent uh, several hours uh, across three different platforms, taking a little deeper dive. So we knew what those couldn't provide us with iMark. The big test was, and quite frankly, I wanted to get them out of my window because I was busy, but I said, all right, if you can do this, here's a form, take it back. And a week later, they called and said, we're ready to do it. And miraculously, it occurred. So it, there wasn't a lot of pain. There wasn't a lot of concern. It was almost like, where have you been? So it, there wasn't a lot of concern from our perspective. We knew going digital was a must have. We just had to find the right partner. And uh, if I can, the only thing I want to add to that is, uh, as I said, right from the outset, you were quite clear that uh, you know the, the three big aspects for you. One was the user experience, that it had to be easy for your crew. Two, it had to be easy to configure in a sense because your forms were, were complex, your processes are complex. And uh, you talked a bit about the rebuild process that is kind of down the pipeline. I mean, that's even more complex because uh, it's in there. So that was the second part, the ability to configure uh, and handle complexity. And the third was the ability to integrate with other systems. And, and you know, we did our best to hit all of those key aspects within the first, you know, uh, the initial few days or weeks of interaction. So uh, that's one. Um, we're actually, I just got a signal from our moderator. So we're, we're actually uh, out of time uh, at this point. Um, and again, I know there are uh, other questions in here. Um, so uh, I, I do want to, uh, well, perhaps we have time for just one more. You mentioned that Relam has multiple locations. How do you, how did you implement across the locations all at once or, or uh, did you use one as a starting point? Um, you know, why did you implement the way you did? 
So we've implemented iMark's digital solution in our Glen Willow, Ohio facility and in our Granite City, Illinois facility. And once we've gotten a few months, perhaps a quarter behind our belt, we do operate with partner facilities in, in multiple states. And so the go forward plan is once we've vetted the success, the data that's captured, then what we will do is assign one user or iPad to our partner facility in Oakdale, our partner facility uh, in the Gulf Coast. And then we have various partner facilities throughout the Midwest and we have another partner facility in, in Ohio. And so every one of those shops that do work for Relam will be presented with an iMark digital solution that's tailored to our forms. And so in real time, we'll be able to capture, has a return been completed? You know, where do we stand in the parts process? Where are we at in the rebuild process? Again, delivering that data back to my commercial, my finance and my operations team, where today there's a lot of check-ins, there's a lot of weekly phone calls, there's a lot of different individuals on our team uh, requesting that data from our partner facility. So, uh, you know, probably Q, Q4, we'll start pushing out tablets to our partner facilities. And again, it's just an app. It's just our version. Uh, but I believe it will continue to drive efficiencies even for our partner facilities that work with us. Thanks for that insight, Danny. And again, um, to all the others who popped in questions here, we will make sure we address these individually um, uh, in the course of the week. Um, at this point, again, thank you, Danny, for your time and participation Certainly. today. Um, and, and to everyone for watching, uh, you know, uh, thank you again for participating here. We will send a, a recording of this webinar via email. Um, and it will be hosted on our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash and on our website. Uh, and certainly follow us on LinkedIn, subscribe to newsletter, and you can stay up, up to date with all the developments at Connext. Um, and, and thank you again, Danny. Thank you for your time today. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Satish. And make sure you tag Reliam and all their socials as well. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. Stay, yeah. stay safe, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all.